Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think I'm going here. Anyway, I'm in court, and I have to go back to court, but uh, through the amazing things of modern technology, I'm able to uh, be here, hopefully, with you, and we're going to get the verdict read uh, momentarily as it relates to the Lori Vallow matter. Obviously, the jury got this case yesterday afternoon. They stayed late through dinner. We thought they were going to get a verdict last night. Uh, but that did not happen. They came back, uh, I believe it was 9 o'clock this morning, and uh, here it is, just about 12.45, and they are to have a verdict. So obviously this is the culmination of a five-week trial, and, well, we'll see. Um, you can listen to the closing arguments. I don't know. I just didn't feel the passion, basically, on... On, uh, on any side of it, and the prosecution, you know, basically concedes that she didn't do anything as far as killing the children, but that she somehow uh, convinced uh, her brother to kill the children and uh, uh, Tammy A. Bell. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what the jury says. I think ultimately it'll come back guilty as to her kids, maybe a chance as it relates to uh, Tammy, but you never know. We'll just have to, we'll find out together all at the same time. So like I said, uh, I'm in court. We were on a, uh, a break and I have to go back at 115. So hopefully the court will uh, do the verdict here. Or I may have to bug out, uh, unfortunately. So I've been reading a lot of the comments here, and obviously people are very excited to be here uh, to see this date finally come. Um, it's taken three years, um, really, from when the children uh, disappeared, two years from basically the indictment date, and I still am shocked that the district attorney didn't figure out until the end of their case that they had charged the wrong subsection of the statute under which they were proceeding to get a conviction. After all the court appearances in this particular case, they waited until that very last minute. And of course, the judge grants them to make that amendment. I think it's ironic because everywhere I've ever practiced in uh, both state and federal court, if you make a change to a statute that is a substantive change you have to go back and re-indict through a superseding indictment you don't get to make a pen change but apparently in idaho things are a little more relaxed for the prosecution and as we talked about the other night on our patreon page that that is the part that just drives me nuts as a criminal defense attorney we have a situation where this is what the rules are but a whatever the prosecution wants they get it makes the prosecution look somewhat incompetent, but it took them that long to figure it out. And then the judge had to bail them out. Had there been a strict judge or the law had been that they can actually had to supersede, uh, this case would have been thrown out at a motion for judgment of acquittal, um, regardless of what the superfluous language in the indictment was. All that other stuff is superfluous. What matters is the statute that has been charged. Not a whole lot of people picked up on that, but that was sheer, utter incompetence by the uh, district attorneys. So hopefully they are going to be coming out here soon because I have to go back to court. And I really want to know what the verdict is, and I'd love to be able to stay on the show with you here today. So, uh, welcome to the court world. Nothing ever happens truly on time. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to herd all the people uh, to the courtroom, getting the defendant with the sheriff, uh, getting all the attorneys, even though the court should say they're going to be there, you know, can be no more than 10 minutes away. And on top of that, it is a uh, situation uh, where everyone should be close. I don't understand why we can't have that. They announced it'll be uh, at 12.45. And yet we wait. Now, the other thing is the court is going to be bringing this 
to us on uh, the court's YouTube channel. I think this is interesting that the court uh, was so secretive about everything related to this case over the last two years since the indictments come down. And there was nothing earth shattering in any particular way that I think shocked anybody or said, wow, if that information had come out, we would not have a fair trial. Didn't happen. So I think uh, Judge Boyce got a little uh, too protective of everyone in this case. I cannot believe the defense agreed to it. Uh, frankly, the information that gets out there probably could have potentially helped them. Um, but, you know, it, it's a, um, it's been an interesting case. It was an interesting opening statement by the defense. It was an interesting closing statement by the defense. Not my style. Um, Mr. Archibald, it did, that's, his, that's his style. He does what he needs to do. We'll see if it was effective in any way whatsoever. But kind of that aw shucks, can't we all just uh, get along type of thing. And just very rambling was very, I don't know, like I said, put a little heart into it in my humble opinion. All right, we're going to try to hold out here as long as we can. I've got about uh, four more minutes till I have to go back. And so hopefully the court will at least start this. Frank, any update as to when they're actually going to do it since they're already late? Probably not. Wait. Is that something there? So I'm currently outside of the courthouse here in uh, Denver. Got the uh, lovely jail here behind us. That's the detention center where they keep people. And then over here, this glass monstrosity, you can see that. That's the uh, courthouse. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks, and the um, judge called us in early today, even though we weren't supposed to start until later this afternoon. But that is what comes up in the practice of law. Everybody thinks that it is uh, some sort of glamorous thing, and um, <laughs> no, sometimes it means eating a bag of chips uh, over the lunch hour, trying to talk to your client uh, over the lunch hour. All those types of things I'm sure Mr. Archibald had to do during this uh, case. So, like I said, we are now three years into this case when the kids disappeared, two years since indictment, and we finally have a verdict. The case was delayed originally because Lori Vallow was deemed incompetent. She went to the state mental hospital to be restored for 10 months. When she came back, she refused to waive a speedy trial, which I'm sure her attorneys would say hindered them in preparation for the defense. Um, and frankly, I'm not sure what they could have done any differently with what they had, other than maybe a little bit more aggressive cross examination. It was just weird to me, but what can you do? Uh, I thought the prosecution's case, I mean, they had a lot of stuff, but it wasn't any great, overwhelming. Sure. I mean, Lori Ballow's biggest problem was the fact that she was not looking for her kids. Who, who does that? Unless, of course, you believe that they're dead. Um, and maybe if you had something to do with it. So that's really what that boils down to. And I'm sure the jury is going to consider that heavily. Uh, we'll see. And I'm getting a text here that uh, Kay and Larry are going to hold a uh, press conference after the verdict is read, which um, that'll always be interesting. You know, Kay and Larry have been uh, friends of Crime Talk for some time, and we met them at Crime Con as well. And hopefully, they get uh, justice uh, for you know JJ, Tyree, and Tammy as well. That's what everybody wants. Hopefully we'll get the justice they're looking for, but it doesn't always happen when you go to the court system. 
a lot of people don't realize that. Um, it's not always perfect justice indeed. All right, well, I hate to have to do this, but you guys are going to have to take the verdict without me. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I can't believe the judge didn't come out at 1245 like he said it was. That's frustrating. You know, if I was an attorney or defendant, they could be held in contempt for showing up late. Wait, is there something there? Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, I'm going to hold on here. Looks like they're waiting on Lori Valley. They brought in the court in where she is. All rise. This is court's now in session. Honorable Stephen Boyce, just presiding. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are going on the record. Madam um, Court Reporter, are you ready? Yes. All right, thank you. This is case CR. 22-21-1624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. The matter before the court today is for a verdict in the jury trial that's been conducted over the last several weeks in this case. The court will note on the record, prosecution is here represented by Mr. Wood, Ms. Blake, and Ms. Smith. The defense, Mr. Archibald, Mr. Thomas are present as well as the defendant who is present. The court's been advised that the jury has reached a verdict at this time. Is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Let's have the jurors brought in, please. While the jurors are being brought in, I'd like to 
indicate that this matter is being live streamed on the court's YouTube channel. In addition, the court's existing conduct order is in effect and everyone needs to comply with that conduct order. This verdict has several counts. The court is going to require that all in attendance abstain from any sort of uh, loud outbursts or sounds that could in any way affect the proceedings in this matter as the counts are read in the verdict. And I expect to maintain order and decorum as has been the case throughout this trial with those in attendance. So please keep that in mind once we get to this stage of these proceedings. So with that in mind, if the jurors are ready, they can be seated. All right, please. Jury's all present, Dr. Bordard. All right, thank you, Mr. Bailiff. Please be seated. All right, the court will note that we had alternate jurors that were excused upon deliberations. So now uh, the remaining 12 jurors who have deliberated are here and appear to all be properly seated. Will counsel stipulate that the jury is all present and properly seated in the state? Yes, Your Honor. Will the defense will stipulate? Yes, Your Honor. All right, at this time, the court will inquire then from the jury. Uh, has the jury reached a verdict? Yeah. Very well. If you have the verdict form, I'd ask the bailiff bring that over here and we'll have it brought to the clerk to be read. All right, the court has reviewed the verdict form, find that it's been properly completed, signed and dated. So at this time, I'll direct the clerk to please read the verdict into the record. The defendant would please rise. In the District Court of the 7th Judicial District of the State of Idaho, in a for the County of Fremont, State of Idaho Plaintiff versus Lori Noreen Ballow, aka Lori Noreen Baybell, defendant, case number CR2221624. Verdict. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn to try the above entitled action for our verdict, unanimous, unanimously answer the questions submitted to us as follows. Question number one. In regards to count one of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number two. In regards to count two of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Tylee Ryan? Answer, guilty. Question number three, in regards to count three of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number four, in regards to count four, the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Ballow? Answer, guilty. Question number five. In regards to count five of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell? Answer, guilty. 
Question number six in regards to count seven of the amended indictment is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of grand theft? Answer guilty. Dated this 12th day of May, 2023, signed by the presiding officer. All right, please be seated. Madam Clerk, thank you for reading the verdict into the record. At this time, let me just inquire of the jury, is this in fact a true and correct verdict? Yes. yes. Thank you. Let me ask now from counsel, does the state wish to have the jury polled? We do not, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to have the jury polled? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, the jury will be polled at this time. Madam Clerk, if you would please indicate only by juror numbers of each of the jurors if this is their true and correct verdict individually. Juror number four, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes, yes. Juror number five, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number six, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number eight, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number nine, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 10, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 11, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 12, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 13, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 14, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 15, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 16, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The court does find it's a unanimous verdict in this case, so I will direct the clerk to record the verdict into the record of this case. I'll now have a closing jury instruction for our jurors and also those alternate jurors that are in attendance today. You have now completed your duties as jurors in this case and are discharged with the sincere thanks of this court. The question may arise as to whether you may discuss this case with the attorneys or with anyone else. For your guidance, the court instructs you that whether you talk to the attorneys or to anyone else is entirely your own decision. It is proper for you to discuss this case if you want to, but you, you are not required to do so and you may choose not to discuss the case with anyone at all. If you choose to talk to someone about the case, you may tell them as much or little as you like about your deliberations or the facts that influenced your decision. If you decide to discuss the case with anyone, you should be careful to respect the privacy and feelings of your fellow jurors. You should limit your comments to your own perceptions and feelings. If anyone persists in discussing the case over your objections or becomes critical of your service either before or after any discussion has begun, please report that to me. At this time, then, the court offers its sincere thanks to the jurors. I appreciate your patience and attentiveness throughout this lengthy trial. I also thank you again for upholding your important civic duty as jurors in this case. I'd also like to thank the attorneys who tried this case for your professionalism throughout the proceedings and in the pretrial motions that came before trial. At this time, then, the court will discuss briefly sentencing in this case. In Idaho, pursuant to Title 19, Chapter 25, a report is required to be prepared before sentencing called a pre-sentence investigation report. In a typical case, that report takes at least two months to prepare. In a case such as this, it will likely take longer. The court will inquire as to a pre-sentence investigator for the time frame required to prepare the report in this case. Upon getting an estimation, then the court will reach out to counsel for determining a date for sentencing. I'll just advise everyone that will likely be, I'm thinking, at least three months probably before that sentencing can be scheduled to have the report completed. The court will also uh, advise at this time then, upon conclusion of the proceedings, the defendant will be remanded back to the custody of the Ada County Sheriff at this time to be transferred to the Fremont County Sheriff for further proceedings in Fremont County for sentencing. The court will also instruct the clerk to collect any of the jurors' notes pursuant to Idaho Criminal Rule 24.1a. At this time then, the court will ask that the jurors and any alternates in attendance be excused from the courtroom. And I am going to direct that all in attendance here remain seated until such time as the jurors have been completely 
exited from the courtroom. And in addition, I'll let the jurors know there is additional information you'll be receiving through the court administration offices on your way out as you leave today. So again, thank you for your service. Uh, court will be adjourned. And Mr. Bailiff, if you could have all rise for the jury. All rise, please. <laughs> Well, there you have it, everyone. Lori Vallow has been convicted of all counts, guilty of all counts in regards to the uh, death of J.J. Ty Lee, as well as uh, Tammy Day Bell. Uh, sentencing will be set out in the future. The jury was polled. It was unanimous, which is what they have to do. And uh, they didn't deliberate long after a five-week trial. All right. But thank you, counsel. Thank you, everyone, for your decorum this afternoon. Court nobody expected to take that long. So court is adjourned. Uh, if anything breaking, we'll do this. But guess what? I got to go back and do some of that lawyer stuff. So have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next time.